Welcome back, guys, to another... Hi, I'm stupid. And this is part number 17 today for our F124 career mode in our rookie debut season in Formula 1. This one for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Now, later in the calendar, but last time out, we had the Italian Grand Prix at the Temple of Speed at Monza. But we had a bit of an upset for the Tifosi, and it was domination by McLaren, and really specifically by our teammate Lando Norris, who cruised to victory. And then with a great idea to pit earlier than everyone else to get a great undercut, we were able to secure our first ever McLaren 1-2 as a pairing in a full Grand Prix situation and it was a very much needed race for the championship constructors wise we now are back in the lead ahead of Red Bull only by five points though so it's incredibly incredibly close in the constructors fight and Lando kind of restarted his chase on the Stappen after those uh, you know quite wobbly episodes I guess you could say the last three where uh, we had DNFs we had you know just the fact that the Stappen won two races in a row he was actually gaining back a lead in the championship so now maybe Lando as an AI driver can be a bit more focused and maybe trying to home in as we get to the last part of this championship with uh, you know, only like what 7 rounds to go we've got a minor ERS upgrade and a drag reduction update on the way which should come in time for the Singapore Grand Prix I believe we just had a chassis upgrade come in though so that will be of aid to us around Baku obviously with the big compromise and I think the Monza result should give us quite a bit of confidence about our performance around Azerbaijan, but it's now time to look at our specialist. And Colin, we're actually over halfway to the next level, level three. We're, we've passed level two. I haven't really, I don't think I acknowledged it when it happened because it's kind of happened out of nowhere. All of a sudden, Col Colin and Zoe, the aero and manufacturing expert, um, both near to level three on the unlocking perks. So that's quite surprising, actually. I thought it was going to take a bit longer than that to maybe get to level three, but also at the same time it only applies when they're actually with us for the race weekend so I guess it's uh it does slow you down a fair bit and as we head into the Azerbaijan Grand Prix some movement and lots of progress for many different teams Ferrari being one of the biggest gainers at the sharp end it's incredibly close and this really looks like for the first time since maybe around Canada or Spain Ferrari could be a real threat to either ourselves or Red Bull. And you know, there could be that spanner in the works in the championship fight versus them for Lando versus Max uh, as Mercedes maybe lag a little bit with a, only a tiny upgrade. Aston Martin plateauing to the point where if Haas were to keep up their upgrades, Haas could actually be quite close to Aston Martin in a bit of a shock. And then at the bottom, quite a few movements going on between Williams and Alpine jumping kick Sauber. So quite nice to see some aggressive up upgrades happening up and down the field and it's going to keep the, the, the grid very, very competitive all the way to the end of this season and then into season two, of course. And a warm welcome here ahead of qualifying for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Normally, these streets are lined with vehicles. It's non-stop traffic jams. But today, the roads are closed to everyone except the 20 best drivers in the world. It's time for qualifying for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Very much looking forward to this qualifying. I think we can go quite well, although based off the first flying lap, I was a little bit shocked because uh, we uh, allegedly didn't have any pace. I was behind both the Visa Cash App RBs. I was only just ahead of Joe Grand New and Logan Sargent, of all people, in the Williams. But uh, alas, thankfully, on the second flying lap, it was just a case of building the confidence. Of course, the first time we've come to Azerbaijan with this new handling model and uh, really pushing the limits there. That was actually a pretty nice, well-held drift through that left-hander. And we've still gained time, actually, even with the rear end wagging out, which tells you a lot about driving this game on the limits and still finding time like that by going a bit sideways as we're purple in purple and uh, the confidence has come to us. Obviously, it is a street circuit, so... You know, like, like Monaco, we talk all the time about Monaco having to build up the confidence and, uh, you know, get closer and closer to the walls. It's the same thing with any street circuit. You build that confidence. And it was just a case of my first flying lap was just very timid, I guess. And we're able just to really push it to the limits, clearly by the drifting, as we get up into P1. But it's super close there. Sights 
up there. 0.011 behind us. Verstappen as well, just showing Ferrari genuinely have some good pace and there really could be uh, you know, a third contender in this battle as it's apparently golden hour here in Baku as we start our first flying lap. Oh my god. Oh my god. And there's a car coming and it's hit us. It's hit us. Oh, it's golden hour here in Baku, but it is absolute pain hour here for me. That is a bit silly as uh, the rear rate. Oh, is it Verstappen? It's Verstappen. It's, Ver it's Verstappen. Oh, no. Oh. oh, my God. I've just unintentionally taken out Max Verstappen. And I might be taking Lando out as well. Oh, my God. This is where it froze on from his POV because that's where officially I stopped being in the session and it was telling me to retire from the session. So I don't know. I may have taken out both my teammate and Verstappen. Oi, oi, oi. That is, that is a real messy situation there. It's an honest mistake from me. We were kicking the rear out and drifting into the corner before we even got to the apex, let alone turning in way too early for said apex. And oh my God. Max is through to the top 10 shootout, but he can't participate because he is out of the entire qualifying day. If you retire, you're out. You can't continue, especially with the damage he had. Oh my God. That is actually incredibly controversial. It, during a title fight between my teammate and Verstappen, I have crashed and taken out Verstappen with me. Lando, seemingly, even though it looked like he was on a collision course for me, has kept going because that's where it froze, where I actually officially retired. So I guess the game simulated him continuing on without any kind of bother and maybe ghosting through my car. So he's through into the top 10 shootout. Max is P10 and that's where he's going to be because he's out along with me. Oh my God, this is massive controversy between McLaren and Red Bull. And it's from an honest mistake. Right, well, let's go to the grid. Let's see how the top 10 shaked out. Lando, mate, you've got to be performing here. This is a huge open goal that I've unintentionally given you. And a warm welcome to you from Azadlik Square, heart of Baku and home, of course, to the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. With high speeds, tight corners and few runoff zones, many are expecting a safety car here today. So our drivers will have to stay very much on their toes and hopefully out of the barriers. With 20 turns and a length of 3.7 miles, Baku City Circuit in the heart of the Azerbaijan capital is a real test of a driver's endurance, patience and precision. 90 degree corners through sector one lead into a tightening uphill sprint as we start to circle around the old city. Then a 1.4 mile chase flat out through sector three towards the finish line. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position, just ahead of George Russell, who starts this event from P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Perez, Hamilton, Fernando Alonso, Stroll, Albon, Verstappen, Hulkenberg, Bottas, Sainz, Magnussen, Ocon, and McLaren, Gasly, Norris, Sonoda, Joe, Sargent, and Daniel Ricciardo fills the last spot on the grid. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. And alongside me today, a man who I'm always pleased to see join me in the commentary box, Anthony Davidson. I know what we've got to do before the start of today's race, but what about our driver? What do the final hours look like for them? Well, for them, you know, you've got your pre-race rituals that you go through. You see different drivers uh, that, you know, some have got their headphones on, they're listening to the music. Some drivers really absorb the energy from the crowd and they're there waving to them. Other drivers, they go within themselves. They chat to their engineers, absorbing that information, that vital information that you need to carry you through the race. And, you know, those pre-race rituals are essential to making things systematic. We do a lot of Grand Prix in a season, and the more systematic you can be, the easier you are within that environment. After all of that, Lando is behind me in P16, like literally behind me on the grid. Um, <laughs> wow. Okay, so I ruined Verstappen's session. I ruined my own session. 
and no one benefited, not even Lando, but literally no one benefited from that crash. Not me, not Verstappen, not Lando, because he, well, he must have qualified P6 only, which is a little bit concerning he only qualified P6, and then he must have taken a 10 place grid penalty for engine components of some kind, um, which is fair enough, he wants to try and negate, you know, it, it maybe he thinks the car is that quick around here, and he's confident about making up positions, but the fact he only qualified P6 is not very promising, to be honest, to back that up, maybe. And like I said, Ferrari are really maybe a true contender. That's a big opportunity for everyone up there in the top 10. We well could have a new F1 race winner in the season here as uh, we now line up towards the grid. We've chosen the hard ties because we've matched what Lando and, crucially, Verstappen are doing. So all of us are trying to go longer into the race and then looking to be quicker at the end on the medium compound attire. As we now look ahead and start to rev up our engines as we look towards five red lights for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Anyone's game today, I feel. Lights out and away we go. Science very slow on the right-hand side. We're taking it a bit cautious because, well, it's uh, a mass of cars ahead of us. We're on the hard compound, so we don't have that initial advantage of the bite into the track, but we have at least made one overtake on Magnussen. I am a bit worried about about Lando's progress today on the hard compound knowing you know how bad the training is at the moment in the game obviously I can try and make something work but I'm very worried about what he could do today but let's see I mean to be honest right now I'm looking at a mobile double chicane of the two Alpines I mean to be honest lads if you just want to crash now that'd be really great that'd be quite useful I'm sure it'll happen at some point. So if you just want to do it here on lap one, get out of the way. That'd be good. No, no. Okay, fine. I'll try and overtake both of you then as we go for the move on Gasly. Tucked up behind Esteban Ocon. Uh, plenty of fighting going on ahead of Ocon between uh, Bottas and Carlos Sainz as well. And that fighting continues all the way to lap two as well. They're still at it as we see Albon neck and neck with Max Verstappen as he tries to uh, recover in this race. Also on the hard tyres, remember. As we're still looking at the back of one Alpine rear wing unable to make a move up until now to be honest even on the on the main straight we just didn't have any pace to make an overtake because Ocon had enough of a slipstream off Bottas and so we have to make a move pretty much in the same place we did versus Gasly to get up into P12 so hey maybe that's going to be an area for overtaking for us because yeah every single time we get to the straight the cars ahead of us are getting a pretty good toe off each other, basically, and we are stuck in a DRS and ERS train of sorts, but we're almost pushing Bottas up the hill as we are much quicker in the corners, and that might just give us enough to make the move on Bottas. We're a lot closer to him than we ever were to Ocon in this area of this track. He goes defensive, he opens up the door, and we go for a very audacious move. We're inches away from the wall on the right. We squeeze Bottas to the left, and get up into P11. But the problem is, Sainz ahead of us, he's outside of one second. So we don't have DRS on the Ferrari. And now Bottas is going to have DRS on us. And he's going to be able to re overtake us. We've used plenty of battery to try and push away. I tried to give us as much distance as possible onto this straight. It didn't matter. He's going to reel us in and repass us. So this is what we're going to have to try and outdrive today as we go for the repass on the inside. Try and slow it down. We actually nearly got off circuit. And Bottas has just done us with the switchback move of dreams to get back into P11. This is not good. We've lost two seconds to Hulkenberg up the road. And that's the next kind of quote-unquote pack or train we need to try and catch. So I'm trying desperately to fully finish off this move on Bottas into the next left-hander, knowing that from the opening two laps, we do have a lot of pace around this next section. The car is very light and nimble, probably thanks to the extra chassis weight reduction upgrade we just got into this race weekend. So uh, yeah, cheers to Lando for buying that one uh, into this one. And now we're trying to close up to this pack that is led by Albon. Albono doing a great job right now, I must say, at holding up this 
Verstappen and that entire train. Meanwhile, in the lead is Leclerc from pole position ahead of Russell and Sergio Perez. As we focus back to our chase and we are actually successfully reeling in Hulkenberg, but ahead, all the action's kicking off. It's three wide between the Ferrari, Williams and Red Bull. Verstappen squeezed out. He might be down two positions. Sainz, a bit of a hero move as he tries to get two for one. Albon's just trying to defend because he was actually the car in the lead uh, before all of that and he's still in the lead now actually as Verstappen is really struggling to get this overtake done. He's on the hards like me so that might be a small reason um, but Sainz on mediums also struggles. That Williams car is actually just not too bad at defending at a circuit like this where it's all about straight line speed and we know how good the Williams car is in a straight line as we now go from left to right and it's well, it's basically a copycat move on Hulkenberg to the one we made on both Alpine cars. So absolutely that part of the circuit I'm so much better than anyone at and I, I honestly think it's due to that chassis uh, chassis weight reduction upgrade the car feels so nimble through there but then on the straights we've got this issue of I'm in DRS but we're not really gaining too much because I've used enough battery just to try and catch up already and now we're having to harvest in sector one but to be honest at the moment Verstappen and Albon they're fighting so much we can afford to take it a bit easy right now on purpose try and maybe save as much battery into some of these corners so we go none ERS very early as oh no 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 oh Verstappen puts his nose in the desperation kicks in maybe for the championship leader and in that desperation he goes for the dive he gets pinched in and instead he's caught napping on the next corner by yours truly we're up into P9 we've just overtaken Verstappen very nicely there. And that's what you get, I suppose, when you're patient and you pick your moments for the overtake. Sainz with the double lockup. And he almost breaks our front wing. Verstappen almost re-overtakes us. The Ferrari, I'm surprised he didn't go straight to the wall, to be honest. And I, I don't know how we managed to slow the car down, but we have. It's uh, flustered us a little bit, but uh, we'll recompose and re-engage with the Ferrari. Meanwhile, Albon has now pulled away 1.7 seconds down the road as we make the move on Sainz. Uh, the battery's looking a little bit low, but because uh, we made the move so late into the straight, Sainz shouldn't be able to re-overtake us. And now, our eyes set on the Williams. We have the pace to chase. Lap six, we're within one second as we play a very dangerous game with that corner. Once again, the rear end kicking out, but it almost helps us keep the car going through the apex and carry that speed that now allows us to be less than a quarter of a second behind Albon. And we're going to be, well, pretty much pushing him down the straight. And we actually do push him down the straight because I knew he was going to be too quick for us once we've overtaken him. Uh, with the ERS, so I just do a bit of bump drafting, you know, take a little, we did Formula NASCAR last episode in Italy, took a bit of inspiration, a bit of bump drafting, never hurt anyone, and, uh, you know, we just uh, made sure that we fully overtake him with no funny business back into turn one, and now it's about blitzing it to try and drop him. We managed to do it with Sainz because he was too busy fighting for Stappen. Can we do it with Albon? Thankfully, thankfully we can because now it's lap 11. So five laps later, Leclerc still leads the race ahead of Russell, Perez, Hamilton P4, Stroll, Alonso, the two Aston Martins, uh, line astern. And then there we are in P7 and we're 5.3 seconds ahead of Verstappen. We're only 1.4 seconds down the road from one of those Aston Martin cars that is now peeling into the pits as the pit stops begin for all of those drivers that started the race on the medium compound of tyre. Myself, Verstappen and Norris very nicely all lined up now. P4, P5 and P6 on the road. All of us continuing on, but look at the gap to Lando. Four, nearly 15 seconds from Verstappen to Lando. So that is all the traffic that Lando faced, the extra traffic that he faced being down in P16 rather than Verstappen, where we, I think he started P9, I think it was, and strolls in now, Russell in, and so that just leaves one more car out on circuit ahead of us, and it's Sergio Perez, uh, both Red Bulls then, seemingly chose the hard compound of tyre as we continue on, and uh, we're only 2.4 off Perez, and Perez was in third place, remember, so as we actually close up to him on lap 14, we're closing up to someone 
that wasn't a net P3. So this, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but this is looking pretty damn good as we overtake Perez now. Almost immediately, we'll peel into the pits to make our one and only pit stop for today. And that's simply because in my own head, I said I'm going to do the opposite of what Perez does on that lap. Because if I'd overtaken him in the Red Bull, I think he fully would have annoyed us by re-overtaking us with DRS and ERS on the very next DRS section. So I thought, look, even though I've got still good pace on the hards, I'll just do the opposite of what he's doing. And now we're going to come out, well, behind Leclerc, but maybe just ahead of the battle between the Mercedes and our teammate as we squeeze out Russell to try and aid Lando as well, because of course he's trying to overtake him. I don't think he's made a pit stop yet though, uh, Lando, so uh, he's a little bit down the order in this race, to be honest, annoyingly. Verstappen's still out there as well. He comes in now, so we're up into second place. Lando's in now, finally. But we're in second. We're legitimately here in second. We've jumped both Aston Martins. We've overtaken Perez. We jumped Russell. And we're now setting the fastest lap of the Grand Prix as we start to chase down Leclerc. Of course, we're on the medium compound of tyres, so we should have better pace. And basing off the first stint, we've got some great tyre wear around here. I really have not had to worry about tyre wear whatsoever. So going earlier onto the mediums, was no worry to me and so we've just got to lock in and uh, not make the same mistakes we're making in quali and hopefully just slowly reel him in and that's exactly what our engineer wants us to do as well on lap 18. Okay mate, Leclerc ahead. We don't want to let this hold us up too long so do your best to get past and get on with the race. So just like at the Monaco Grand Prix we are chasing down the race leader at a street circuit and our engineer gives us the biggest confident boosting message to tell us to go get him and we're gonna do just that he wants us to try and do it before lap 23 well lap 20 we're now just over a second outside of drs to leclerc so i think we're on track hopefully to meet that objective meanwhile a bit further back absolute chaos going on some great scrapping between russell and verstappen we now see this pair can be together at baku as verstappen gets up into p5 the mercedes moving about in the break and, he locks up and he's lost it verstappen locks up he's locked up and he's doing a five point turn at the same corner that we crashed him out in quali oh that's pain he's just seen lando waltz by don't worry for f for f unbelievable drama here in baku this is actually a massive moment not only in this race but maybe the championship, you never know. You never know what the championship's going to come down to in the final race. And we could be talking about this moment there where Lando overtakes him very easy as he tries to get back onto the circuit. Unreal, unreal. And look at this camera shot. Look at him there waiting to come back on circuit. That camera shot could go down in history for this season. That is could be an iconic moment in the season oh my word and meanwhile for us in our world we've caught up to Leclerc later on on lap 20 we've got buckets of pace here around this circuit and you know what in clean air we've got plenty of ERS now we're not even having to use overtake mode hot lap mode will be enough as we surge up into first place of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix what is it with these more technical street circuits or street style circuits Monaco Hungary and now Baku we're into the lead we move to the left to try and break the slipstream of Leclerc because I know that Ferrari is very good in a straight line and you can see he's very close to us as we just have a little bit of a hesitant moment into that left hander because now now the pressure's on I've got to control this race and I'm not going to lie straight into that left hander where Leclerc was moving about in the break zone I, I was thinking don't put it in the put it in the, in the wall just like you did in quali because it's so easy to do that sort of thing but purple first sector oh my god oh my god Oh my god. Right, okay. Please let that be the last jump scare of the entire race. My word, we nearly put it in the wall there. That was 100% code brown in the cockpit as the safety car is deployed. Is there one final twist in the tail? 
Oh no, I'd, I'd rather not have that. We were doing well. We gained three seconds on Leclerc to really control the race. But this is why the safety car is out with three laps to go. Oh no. Oh my god. Yuki almost, almost had a horrific crash. And he avoids it. But to, oh no, there is a pile up though. Because the Haas behind Sonoda... Um, also avoided contact, but he parked it up at the apex, and Ricardo comes in and hits that. I can fully see now why there's a safety car. If there wasn't, I'd be a bit surprised. And for a moment, I did think about maybe pitting, because we could pit and come out in third place, only behind Leclerc on a, on a new set of soft tyres. But I thought, then I kind of snapped out of it, and I thought, look, we're in the lead. We don't have much tyre wear. We were three seconds ahead of Leclerc, showing the pace we have. He's on older hard tyres. There was no reason to risk it. Let's not come in. Let's just keep it calm. We're P1, and the, the safety car should come in this lap, but it won't matter. It won't matter. It won't matter at all, because in the biggest devastation going from the lead of the race, the engine goes up in smokes, and it's a Massive engine failure. We're caking the entire circuit with smoke. That's the biggest engine failure I've ever had on the F1 game. Are you kidding me? After all of that, from the lead of the race, two laps to go. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Why, man? Why? From the lead, two laps, two laps, two laps. That's all we had to go. Ah, oh. Bloody hell. F1, man. Cruel, cruel, cruel sport. It's never an easy race here in Azerbaijan. There's drama around every corner, but they've come through to take a brilliant victory here today. I mean, it looked like they were in a different category at points during the race, led every lap. I mean, what more can we say? Uh, Anthony, I'm not too sure about leading every lap of the race. Um, I did lead a few laps there before my DNF, thank you very much. But um, yeah, clearly the F1 gods really wanted a Ferrari win today. Oh, I mean, what, what's there to say? DNF, that's, that's the worst way to, to end a race. In the lead of the race, should have won it by a country mile there at the end. And, um, yeah, engine failure. I mean, at least silver lining for the race in, as a whole with that massive mistake for Verstappen. Lando at least did gain a couple of points on Max when it could have easily been him losing points to him after starting solo down. Um, and maybe, maybe the engine failure, some of you will say, is karma for uh, me taking out Max in the first place and qualifying and putting him in a situation where he was fighting so hard that he maybe felt pressurised and then made the mistake. I don't know. It all comes round cosmically, I guess. But um, that's no, no, um, no comfort to me right now. Wow. Uh, we gain stats on everything apart from focus because we still did a great job, you know, overall in that race. We recovered so well up until the DNF. And to be honest, if this is how the AI's focus gets calculated, I can see why on this game and in past F1 games, all of the AI drivers' focuses seem appalling because mine's in the bin right now. Um, so if it's the same system that has been there since like F1, what, like 2021, I can see why in all these different career modes in these different games where the AI just have this terrible focus all the time. Um, yeah. But yeah, like I said, still positives from that race. You know, we, we looked so quick, so you've got to take some solace in that, I suppose. Um, and and obviously, our teammate gained points on his championship rival, so that's good. But uh, elsewhere, absolute devastation. But this is really the highs and lows of a Formula 1 season, especially a rookie Formula 1 season. My God, our emotions have been up and down. Hoping to find some consistency in, in those kind of things in, in a future season, maybe. But for now, it is topsy-turvy, and I hope you guys have been enjoying it. Because if you have, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.